If I'm doing a summary of how to calculate the reference angle in each quadrant, well, I know for quadrant one, it's always going to be between zero and 90 degrees. If I am just looking at degrees between zero and 360 for a total. And quadrant two is going to be between 90 and 180 degrees. In quadrant three, it would be between 180 and 270 degrees. And in quadrant four, it would be between 270 and 360 degrees. How would I actually solve the reference angles? Well, in quadrant one, my reference angle is what my original angle is. In quadrant two, my reference angle is going to equal 180 minus my original angle. In quadrant three, my reference angle is going to be 180 plus, sorry, my original angle minus 180. And in quadrant four, my reference angle is going to be 360 minus my original angle. If I'm solving for my original angle given my reference angle, well, this is convenient enough. My original angle is going to be my reference angle. In this case, my original angle would equal 180 minus my reference angle. Here, my original angle would equal 180 plus my reference angle. And for the last one, my original angle would equal 360 minus my reference angle. If I'm sketching these out, then I could say that here would be my original angle. And this would be my reference angle. Here would be my original angle. And here would be my reference angle. Original angle. My reference angle, and in the last case, my original angle, and my reference angle. So if I'm going to determine the angle in standard position where if I had an angle of 50 degrees and I'm going to reflect it first in the y-axis. Well, I'm going to start by doing a dotted sketch of my angle of 50 degrees and when I reflect this in the y-axis then it's going to reflect over to here but when I've reflected it in the y-axis, this space is still going to be the same, which means that I'm just solving for what a angle would be with a reference angle of 50 in quadrant 2, where theta is equal to 180 minus 50, 
which is equal to 130 degrees. If I'm reflecting it in the x-axis, then it's going to open downwards, but the spacing here would still be 50 degrees, which means that it's going to have the same reference angle. Theta is going to equal, well, in quadrant 4, 360 minus 50 or 310 degrees. If I reflect it in the y-axis, then the x-axis, it's going to open up down here. But as I'm sure you've already guessed, this angle is still going to be a reference angle of 50, which means that I could say that theta is going to equal 180 plus 50, or 230 degrees. If I'm using specific points that it tells me on the terminal arm, then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to determine what the angle is given that the point of 4 and 3 lies on the terminal arm. I'm going to draw my initial arm along this positive x-axis, find the point of 4 and 3, and then draw my terminal arm through that point. If I start at my terminal arm and go straight down, you can see that I've created a right angle triangle. And if this is my angle that I'm searching for, I have a right angle triangle that has a opposite of 3 and an adjacent of 4. I can use that in my basic um, tan ratio in order to solve what the angle is. I can say that if tan of the angle x is equal to 3 over 4, then x is going to equal tan to the negative 1 of 3 over 4. Now, make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. You can always check that by putting in tan 45, and the answer should be 1. If you don't get 1, go into your calculator under the mode function, and then change it into degree mode. If you did correctly, you should get... 37 degrees. If I reflect this in the x-axis and give a new point, then I'm going to reflect it down across the x-axis. There's my initial arm, there's my terminal arm, and I can see that this is going to run through the point of 4 and negative 3. When I want to reflect in the y-axis and give it a new point, then it's going to reflect over here. Here's my starting arm. Here's my terminal arm, and it runs through the point of negative 4 and 3. And if I reflect it in the x and then the y-axis, my initial arm is going to be the same, but it's going to cross to the point of negative 4 and negative 3. What can you say about the reference angle of each of these? They are all the same. The reference angle is created from turning it into a triangle, and they all create the same right angle triangle. If I'm letting the point the square root of 3 over 2 and 1 over 2 be the point on the terminal arm in quadrant 1, what are the coordinates of Q, R, and S, which will be in quadrant 2, 3, and 4? Well, if Q is in quadrant 2, 
Then in quadrant two, my x becomes negative, but my y stays positive. If r is in quadrant three, then my x and my y are negative. And if s is in quadrant four, then my x is positive, but my y is negative.